And today's gonna be the day for fabricating the shocks. Oh. I left the shocks in the house. Right, I'll be back. So fabricating the mounts for the shocks, I should have said, not fabricating the shocks themselves. So these have been delivered. These RFY shocks. I mean, I'm not off-road biking. I'm not gonna be going through some massive potholes all sorts. So these do exactly the job that I want them to do. Anyway, so I've got them all in black, as you probably would have seen from the um, little mock-up that I did of the bike. I wanted black shocks. I wanted the red of the frame to stand out more than anything else. So, all black. Which makes a difference from the old shocks that they used to be. Now, the new ones are a little heavier. I'm not too bothered about that. But what I have done with these new ones are chosen forks, which are a little bit shorter. Reason being, the new mounts are going to be lower down. The drive shaft arm is going to be a bit more of an angle, but I don't want it to be too much of an angle. So by choosing forks that are shorter, I'm sort of correcting that. So for the time being, I've just put this hoop stuck with a few little Jubilee clips, um, just so I can hold it strongly in place whilst I measure where I'm going to be putting these. So the dilemma I've got is do I mount them here, like that, or upside down shocks? Up here, if you see with this, I'm gonna to have to bring the mount out a little bit. The mount for one of the shocks is actually on the rear wheel itself, so I'm gonna to have to put that back on, measure everything from there, put a few pins in, hold things in place, and measure it from there. So that's what I'll do now. So two weeks has passed since that last clip that was just shown. What I was trying to do, I was trying to take this bracket, which was the old bracket, the old sort of wave from the old CX500, which way did it go? Actually went that way, the old wave. So the top flat frame section was there, and then you had this wave going up, and then that was going back towards your the rear of the bike. What I was trying to do was I was trying to salvage this bit here which is the other side, and seeing if I could connect it from from the main curve of the frame at the bottom up to the new hoop that we had. Now what I found out when I was actually working on it is that this actually twists, so I don't know if you can see, but there's a little, there we go, it's probably a better way, there's a little kink in it, so it twists with the old frame, where the old frame was going out, it would twist it into shape. Now this wasn't the same kind of bend that I wanted to, to connect the two pieces of frame. So what I did was I started grinding it down, started grinding it to shape, so you can see there that, that the hoop would sit in there quite nicely. But when I put this on the actual frame itself, nothing fit, and it, there was no way of getting it to fit. And the more I was playing around with it, the more it was kind of breaking, and it seemed kind of pointless to use this in the end. So, so you'll find times when you're building your own bike where you have to say, Listen, what I'm doing here isn't safe. It's not going to be safe for me to ride. It's not going to be safe for someone else to ride. So you have to get the pros involved. Now the pro in this case is, is a really talented welder. His welds are absolutely beautiful. And what he can do is it's definitely MOT worthy. It's definitely road safe. He builds his own choppers from scratch. So I can definitely say that the job he does is going to be 100% safe. I went to him with my hoop, with my measurements, everything, and and he ended up suggesting having a little plate to hold the shocks. That's what I've had back. And the bike's just been delivered back to the workshop now, and it's looking absolutely beautiful. I'm so thrilled with this. It's gonna look really nice, especially when it's painted all red. <laughs> it's gonna look absolutely fantastic.
we've got a nice TIG weld here, and the weld here was a bit thick, so uh, what the fabricator decided to do was to, to sand that down so it's a smooth join on that, and that is really smooth, actually, that's gorgeous. I've got the seat here, so the seat's going to be pulled down with some brackets underneath, so that's going to curve it to the shape of that. That's just coming to the end here, and that's going to be a nice colour red all the way through into the tank here all the way down so it's going to look absolutely beautiful by the end and these black shocks against this red bracket here is just going to finish it off so that brings us to the end of this video the next steps for me is to sand down all the remaining um, bits and tabs and things that I don't need on the bike itself then I just put an electrics tray and try and figure out where exactly I can put that I'm quite limited with space under this I've got I've got about two inches under the seat so that's going to do for the fuse box um, relays, not much else to be honest, the battery is definitely not going to fit in there so I'm going to have to figure out where else to put the battery. It might be an idea to put it on a box just at the back there so it's hidden out of the way. We'll have to see what we can do with that. I might put the engine back in and then try and measure everything around that. But so far I'm so happy with the job that the fabricator's done. It goes to show sometimes that you have to put your trust in other people as well sometimes. You have to admit, when you can't do things yourself, my welding is alright, but it is nothing compared to someone that does it full time, and it's not as safe. So it takes it takes years, it takes experience, it takes mistakes, failures, all sorts to learn how to do a proper weld. And the problem is, if you haven't got that experience, then what you might do is actually weld the outside, but you're not actually fusing the inside, and that's the important bit there, where the two metals actually fuse together. So, as far as I can say with this, it's superb i have no complaints i absolutely love it it's it's seriously made my day to see this to get it back into the workshop and to get it at this stage it's gonna look so nice and no more cx 500 horrible wave frame that i absolutely hate it's beautiful so i'll leave it there so subscribe if you want to see more progress on this bike monday's video is going to go back to the gs 550 and spray that tank I was going to do that video today, but time ran out and I wanted to do a proper job on the tank rather than rush it just to get the video out. So subscribe to see that video next week and I'll catch you then.